Hello from wherever you are, and welcome to Let's Play Games. I'm John McFarland, Adult Services Librarian for National Public Libraries, and I hope you'll join me in learning or rediscovering some of the more common and uncommon games out there. Last time, we scratched the surface of one of the more complex wit and wisdom style games. No dice rolls, just your wits and the ability to make and break agreements. This time, I'm going to show you how the world's best play this game, because of course there are tournaments for this. Let's get stuck in. Last time, we went through an example game, through one year. It was the spring phase, the fall phase, and the winter phase with building units. And we saw that Turkey did not exactly have the best start. Austria-Hungary got squished. Russia moved south. Germany moved a little bit towards the North Sea. England went just about everywhere. France went to the Iberians. And Italy went sort of the direction of... Balkans. What I want to do is take you through a top tier game. So tournaments are great places to learn about some of the nuance. Let me move this back to South Coast here. It is also typically where the best ideas come from of particular openings. So usually you will consider some agreements. Uh, I've heard informally Russia and Turkey, whenever they ally, they call it a juggernaut. Why? Because if the two of them agree to mutually move this way, it's kind of hard to compete against that when they're both cooperating like that. Also, uh, the French, the Russians, and the Turkish, if they ally, it's called the Frogger Knot. Uh, the Western Triple would be England, France, and Germany. Germany doesn't particularly like this one, usually because they have to be at the front line of everything. Uh, but it ends up being that if you can get a general alliance, you can find a way to at least carve out a draw. Solo wins are rare. You have to have the right confluence of events, the right timed backstab, the right timed grouping of units together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this uh, piece by piece. And I've got it on a document here to make it a little easier to work with. Just because it can get a little messy. But that's why every copy of the game, and you can usually get printable versions for this, ends up coming with a nice little pack where it says, okay, where are my units? Uh, typically, people will actually keep one handy and kind of draw out like their sports ball coaches and they will map out where their next moves are going to be and what idea they want to have. So we'll go through this. This is back to spring 1901. We're going to see Kiel go here. Uh, this, if you watched last episode, looks exactly like the opening we did. Certain moves you kind of just have to make. Uh, England is going to move from Edinburgh to Norwegian. London to North Sea, and then this army is going to move over to Yorkshire. Which last episode, they moved south. This time they're moving north. That tells me there's a Scandinavian agreement going on here. France, oh, I'm going to switch this. Brest goes to Mid-Atlantic Ocean, and then France is moving its Paris unit to Burgundy and they're using Marseille to support that. So this, for example, if uh, Germany wanted to go right in here to Burgundy and it wasn't supported, they'd be able to do so. But by having the support, it's two against a theoretical one, ends up not happening here, just to make sure that that movement happens. It also means that they can go after Munich, they can go after Ruhr, they can technically go into Belgium if they want, they can also go to Picardy. It just allows their options to change. Uh, the Russians are going to go into the Gulf of Bothnia like they did last time. This Russia piece in Warsaw is going to hold. Moscow army goes into Ukraine. And Sevastopol is going to attempt to go into the Black Sea. I say attempt because I know that, it, that uh, Turkey is going to try and do the same thing. So this is where I talk about it again, that bounce. Everybody goes back 
to their respective corner, nothing further happens. So this tells me that Russia's kind of going after Austria-Hungary again, like it was last episode. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we've got Italy, Naples to Ionian Sea. They're gonna move Rome to Naples. And then Venice is gonna go to Trieste, or attempt to. Because now that we're at Austria-Hungary, Budapest goes to Serbia. Vienna attempts to go to Trieste and their fleet is going to go towards Albania. This is where, again, we run into that bounce situation. So now Vienna, Venice, they're staying right where they are. This is where the principle of supporting units comes into such play. And for supporting units, you have to make sure that they are in contact directly. So, for example, a unit in Budapest could technically support. Serbia could, Albania could, Tyrolia could, Bohemia could not. It needs to make sure that the support can be active. So let's say you wrote out the unit of I'm attacking Trieste through Vienna and I'm supported by Bohemia. The way this would work is that you have to go through the rules of processing. And it's like, okay, you can't support something you're not directly connected to. So this is an invalid order. Um, part of this game is knowing how the units move and how the units work. And this is why you get into such nuance about it and why sometimes there can be some disagreements. Uh, lastly, we've got uh, Constantinople to Bulgaria, Smyrna to Constantinople. So this is pretty good as a first move. Let's go ahead and put these supply center tokens down here. Russia did not get any new ones. Turkey got one. Italy got none. And that was it for this turn. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go to the next set of movements, which is gonna be that fall 1901. And then I'm just gonna go through this one and then I promise you, I've got much more to talk about with diplomacy as a game. The English, I'll start here and kind of work my way around. English are gonna go from Norwegian Sea to Norway. Take that one with a can. The North Sea is actually gonna do that convoy that I talked about last episode. So the Yorkshire is eligible to technically be moved to Norway, Holland, or Belgium. And they're going to write in that their fleet is convoying from Yorkshire to Belgium is what they decided. So I'll just put them here for a moment. Uh, what else is going to happen? France is going to go to Portugal like we saw last episode. They're going to go for what they need. Army to Marseille. Uh, and then here's the problem. France and Italy or sorry, France and England clearly haven't coordinated here because, well, neither of them's getting Belgium now because they both tried to go for it. So it's gonna bounce. So England's gonna stay right at Yorkshire. Nobody gets anything. Germany, meanwhile, is gonna go into Holland and the army in the Ruhr, because it's connected here, is gonna support the Kiel to Holland move. That's the A, S, and then the movement name. But this gives them yet another token. And remember, the home unit has to be free in order for you to lay claim to it. So this is where it really starts getting important what you work for. Let's go and move to Italy. Ionian C goes to Tunisia. So they get that one that's pretty common move. Uh, the army is going to move to Apulia from Naples. Remember, you want to keep it free for when you have a new unit. And then here's where it starts getting a little fun. This Venice unit is going to hold. Now, Russia is going to start trying to work through. Uh, going to go for the Black Sea again. It looks like they get bounced. So that goes. 
the Warsaw goes to Ukraine. The Ukraine goes to Romania. And this Gulf of Bothnia goes into Sweden. So you got this here and this here. And I forgot to add a piece for Austria Hungary moving here. Oh, make sure I haven't missed anything else yet, which does happen on occasion. Sometimes you have to take a second to look at the board and see what's left. Um, so that bounced. And then now what they've got is the army from Bulgaria is supporting a movement from Ukraine to Romania. So they were trying to make sure that there must have been an agreement about from Russia and Turkey, but hey, you can have Romania and Austria-Hungary can't have it because they're my target. They're the people I want to be against. But their A, convoy, uh, they want to move it from through territory from apologies they want support to get all the way to Trieste in theory they would be able to with Serbia coming down here if the army had moved from there to there they in theory would have been able to get through and support this Venetian attack because here let me take a step bit with them moving here and then moving here they wanted to move from Constantinople towards Serbia and then that way they could support the attack on Trieste to get them bumped well because it didn't happen like that the order got voided. So this way, I know now that Italy and Turkey are at least tentatively agreeing. Uh, Turkey seems to have agreement with Russia. So if I'm the Austro-Hungarian player, I'm not liking where I'm at so far. Because now, through the end of one turn, let's add in the units. So this will be Moscow. They'll add in another one at... Warsaw, and then the Turkish will add in a fleet to Smyrna. The Italians are going to add a fleet to Naples. The French will put fleet in Brest, army in Paris. The English will put a fleet in London. The Germans will put an army in Berlin and a fleet in Kiel. So now through one year, let's kind of take a look at the situation where we're at as we enter spring 1902 or turn three. Germany is really making a push over here. They've probably got at least a tentative agreement with Russia to not attack yet. They've held back on the Scandinavians. The English and Russians have an agreement to divide that. England is probably not cooperating with France because that Belgium, unless you're trying to throw people off the scent, especially Germany, uh, that's typically a weird thing to accidentally bump off like that. Italy, Russia, and Turkey are definitely going after Austria-Hungary. That is an absolute obvious thing at this point. So if you're Austria-Hungary, now you've got to get Russia to break off its agreement or Turkey to break off its agreement. Realistically, Italy, you want to get off of your case because if these two really are coordinating and they're going to keep coordinating, you are in trouble and you are the first to be eliminated. So I'll take a second. Uh, I'm going to advance a little bit in this game as we get to the next level of complexity here. And you can see a little bit of history about this game. <laughs> So last time I talked about the context of the time period as to how this board looks. I want to talk also about the development of the game. The developer uh, came up with the idea while studying basically the Congress of Vienna, 
which was an agreement between the European powers as to how they were going to respectively subdivide their land both in Europe and in other contents, because this is a game about colonialism and maintaining those monarchies. So they were researching within uh, Life magazine about it and started to develop an idea. They wanted it to have kind of the complexity of chess, but within the actual map. And they said they got the idea for the idea of alliances out of the card game Hearts. Because in Hearts, usually the person who's in front ends up being teamed up against by the losing players to try and make it even over the course of the game. So they developed that concept, put it onto a map, and that was sort of the first step of the game. And this was about the 1950s. I advanced a little bit. Uh, we are now in fall 1905. A couple things have happened while we were away. We see that France and Germany had their inevitable conflict, and Germany is kind of being squished pretty hard. It looks like England and France decided to ally with each other. Notice that they've even kicked Russia out of Scandinavia. Germany's down to its last two units not feeling great about their chances right now. So usually when you're in a position like this where you're one of the weaker players and you're on the verge of elimination, you got two other choices. You can either ally with somebody and give them an advantage or just decide to play, hold, and hope maybe you can get back into it somehow. If you're sitting on your last two supply centers, you are running into potential for some trouble. And the reason why Germany is really in trouble is notice that Holland and Kiel are occupied by France. Which means that if, because Berlin's the only supply center they've got left, if this holds and nothing else changes, they will be down to one unit. That will not be good. Uh, for England, they've moved up into Scandinavia. A little concerned about this French unit right here, but that might just be for security purposes. Um, Portugal and Spain have held here. They've moved into the Mediterranean. They're probably going to eventually move against Italy here because after you take out Germany, there's really only so many places you can go. Uh, Italy's cut into Austria-Hungary pretty effectively, but they've got a nice little defensive structure here in the Balkans. Uh, they are trying to hold on. Uh, out of Vienna been right here the whole time. The Italians are kind of trying to cut into Turkey over here and get through this small area. Turkey's in the same problem that Germany is. Uh, they've only got the two supply centers, Constantinople's already taken, and their units are actually not even in their supply centers. And Russia's kind of holding serve, just right where they're at. But looks like St. Petersburg might be in some trouble here soon left open. The English appear to have all wanted to cover this area. So I will go ahead and go through what happens here because there's a little bit of talking about not just bouncing that we've talked about before, just lodging, but also cutting. Cutting is when your units are intended to help in some way, but because of some action upon them, like an attack, their support is cut, which means that it can affect if, let's say you had two for one unit with a support, now you only have one, and now you might be dislodged. So this is part of where it really starts getting into the mix of things. So I'll go through Austria. Uh, they want to put their Bulgaria into Greece. Uh, what they want their Greece to do is to go to Albania. They want the Serbian unit to help out with this Albanian attack. So that's going to be your, uh, let's see, where is that? There it is. Your A, Serbia, Army in Serbia, supports Greece to Albania. And then you're going to have the Bohemian is going to try and help with the attack. This is where you start getting into diplomatic agreements. 
The Austro-Hungarian is agreeing to help with the French attack from Munich to Tyrolia, which could kick out the Italian unit. Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, oh, and the Vienna is going to go after Trieste here. So I'm not going to go into the resolution. I'm just going to give you the orders as they're written and we'll resolve it all at the same time. So the English, they are going to be in this Bothnian one is going to support the Barents Sea into St. Petersburg. So we're going to do that and kind of do that over here. Their Denmark unit is holding their army in Norway is trying to support the same attack because remember it connects through this little bit up here so it's technically three units attacking for this one odds are they're probably going to get it at this point uh, their north sea is going to go into the english channel their fleet in baron sea is going to actually make the attack and their norwegian sea unit is going to go into the north atlantic ocean over here for the french they're going to go from, they're going to take their fleet and try and go after Tunisia. The Gulf of Lyon is going to go after the Turanian Sea units. Uh, the unit, the army in Kiel is going to support a, let's see, this is always where it starts getting a little Complex or Holland's gonna hold. We'll at least have that. The army in Kiel is gonna actually support the Eng the German attack that will be coming for the Baltic Sea to Denmark. So this is where you start getting into those agreements where, okay, Germany's about on the way out. But the English are probably gonna be a threat soon to me since they're on my back. So I'll keep Germany alive. Let's see what else happens here. The Irish goes into Liverpool. So England and France are definitely in conflict now. The Burgundy goes to Munich because this unit is attacking and trying to get into Tyrolia. And then the fleet. Yes. So everything's set up for that. Germany, they're going to take their Berlin unit and try and support the. So they're going to support attack into Munich because there's really only so much they can do. They're going to move that fleet over to Denmark if at all possible. The Italians are going to have the Ionian fleet here, support an Albania into Greece. This is where things start to get interesting with notice all of these movements were coming into play. Well, now everything is happening at once, which is what makes it kind of chaotic. Uh, the Tyrolean army is going to go towards Trieste, if at all possible. Uh, the Constantinople one holds. Trieste is going to try and go to Serbia. And then the Tyrrhenian Sea one is going to go for Tunisia, if at all possible. So this puts them in conflict. On Russia, Warsaw is going to go to Galicia. That'll work. Sevastopol going to go towards Romania. Uh, where's this one going? Oh, this one needed to be moved, actually. I apologize. And so it's going to go for Romania. Uh, Finland to Sweden. It's uh, Army in Prussia. That's where that one needed to be. It's Prussia one is supporting Berlin and trying to hold it together because that would put, say this German one is eliminated. Well, it puts them more at risk from the French and the English since that's a big conflict now. 
And then the... Oh, where's the last one? It's an army in Livonia. It's going to try and go after Sevastopol. But remember, at the beginning with the English, they've got three supports here on one. So there's going to be some bouncing. So it's going to move its unit from the Black Sea towards Romania for Turkey. And then the Aegean is going to try and support uh, the Constantinople to Bulgaria attack. Because they probably said, hey, we're going to attack Bulgaria. And then Italy decided, I'm not actually going to do that. This is part of the negotiations. You can agree to do anything you like, but you don't have to actually follow through with it. So let's see how this all shakes out, because a lot happens here. This succeeds just fine. This succeeds just fine. This attack succeeds because it's supported by the French here. So because that unit from the North Sea went to the English Channel, they can move into the North Sea there. The St. Petersburg attack is going to work. They're going to be stuck at Livonia. These two are going to bounce and be right back where they are. Uh, the Aegean, they're going to camp out where they are. The Albanian one's going to work uh, because these two attack Tyrolia. Uh, they are going to be bumped back to Venice. The Munich one is going to move there. The Burgundy one is going to be able to do that movement that they wanted to do. Uh, even though there's multiple attacking on Trieste. They're safe there, uh, mostly because the support ended up being cut over here with all of the myriad attacks going on. So here's where Austria-Hungary runs into a problem. Because this bounced, this bounced, and uh, let's see, these bounced. So they're back in their corner. This Greece ends up being dislodged from the combined attack from Albania and the Ionian Sea. There's nowhere for it to go. Because the Ionian Sea is not available, the Aegean Sea is not available, Albania is not available, Serbia is landlocked, Bulgaria is not available. This unit is instantly taken out of the picture. So if you are sitting on the Turkish plan right now, Germans, probably the Austro-Hungarians too, you're not feeling pretty good about yourself. Mostly because there's so much going on here. Now, this is where you start adding the units back in. It's a game where it really does scale for you. So the French get Marseille, add another in Paris, another in Brest. Uh, England, because they lose supply centers here, because remember, it's the end of the year, which is what matters most when it comes to unit construction. Uh, they are going to be losing out on those centers, which means that we've only got one, two, three. So their Norway one holds, that Sweden one goes away. There, they do keep the St. Petersburg, which is, I'm sure, good for them, but it means that they have to get rid of the number of units that they can't afford to hold on to. So that's one, two, three, four. Got to move this one as well. Easily enough, can move that Kiel one straight to Denmark. Holland one is gone. Yeah, Germany is not doing well right now. And I would be very concerned if I were in their position. I'm probably thinking about, okay, how am I going to go out here? So for England, they have to now choose which units to disband. These are able to be selected from any of the ones. Uh, so they get rid of the St. Petersburg and the Gulf of Bothnia ones. And typically this is a smart strategy because it is at this point where 
you have to try and protect the closest area to you. If you lose all your supply centers, you're out of the game. And they can see that St. Petersburg and Bothnia are of no help. They're surrounded by the Russians. The Russians can probably counterattack here in a moment. Oh, I'm trying to see if anybody else has anything that they can construct. So Germany has their two. Everything is about even here. This tells me a couple of things. On the map, I kind of know that Germany's probably out. Turkey's probably gonna be out soon. Austria-Hungary is about out. This is that next level of negotiation where are you trying to win on your own? Are you trying to have a draw with certain players? Right now, England, Russia, France, and Italy can all make a reasonable case for being involved in the endgame, being involved in a draw of some sort. Now it's the question of how many centers can you control? Because if you're playing a competitive game, instead of it being a draw, the important part is a ranking of how many supply centers you have. You can be involved in a draw, but if you only have one supply center, you're going to be at the bottom of that draw. So, take another step back because I want to talk a little bit more of the history of this game and why it matters so much about communication and how it developed. And then I'll take you kind of into the end game of this in how it's going to start shaking out. One sec. So most of the pieces for this game had already been developed and the entire strategy, but you needed the rules and the specific rule set, which is a little more complex than the average game. But it follows kind of a concept called unite to fight, separate to live, and it comes from Napoleon. This is how pretty much all rules can go back to that concept of if you have support, you're going to be more likely to succeed, but you can't squeeze yourself into a box, otherwise you will get hemmed in and trapped. So in 1954, this game was pretty well developed and about 500 sets were manufactured at the start. It got rejected like many games we've talked about in this series from multiple publication companies. But what did help was the idea of zines or press. This game was primarily played if you couldn't organize your friends to play it through the post. You would all have a specific magazine that would be given out with the turns, what the situation was, and you would be able to send letters to not only the company who was managing the game for your moves, but also you would send letters to your other players trying to negotiate alliances. So it really was a game of strategy negotiation that would take place over months, some games years. This popularity is what led to diplomacy being published eventually by Avalon Hill. Went a little further ahead. Uh, we are now in fall 1909, so we're getting close to the end game now here. First off, uh, Turkey's been eliminated. Uh, they were eliminated about three or four turns ago when the combined forces of Italy and Russia decided to just give them the squeeze. France has kind of kept its little base over here. They've kept that Iberian Peninsula. Remember earlier, they were in Liverpool all of a sudden. They got kicked out of there, so England preserved their turf and got back into Scandinavia. Russia's kind of kept themselves in play here up in the north, but England's really dug themselves in in St. Petersburg. Germany is sitting in Berlin. They're, they're basically done at this point. All they can really do is hold. Eventually, somebody is going to knock them definitively out, and they'll be out of the game. So that'll probably happen the next turn or two, especially with all these French units here. But at the same time, they're also not going to push that hard for it because take a look at Italy over here. They've got themselves a nice little base. Uh, they have a little bit of the remnants of Austria-Hungary left. Uh, notice that Romania recently got taken, but it hasn't been officially off the board yet. But they're in some real danger right now. That's not a supply base. That's not a supply base. That's not a supply base. We've only got one unit on anywhere that is a supply base. And if there's any sort of coordinated attack, they're done. 
So here is where we have our next phase of things. They want to bring in the Greece to Serbia. They want to take the Galicia unit and try and take it to Warsaw. They want to take their Ukraine and support an attack from... Basically, they think that something is coming from Sevastopol, but it's not. Uh, the Livonia one is going to try and go towards Moscow. So they're trying to displace this unit here. England is going to go for its fleet in Denmark. It's going to try and support a Norway to Sweden attack. It's St. Petersburg is going to hold. The Barents fleet is going to support the Sevastopol, so that should be okay. And then the actual formal attack of Norway to Sweden. And the last thing is going to be uh, these two over here, North Sea and the English Channel. They're going to be attacking Belgium right here. And North Sea, since it also borders Belgium, is eligible. So they're going to make this attack here. Uh, meanwhile, let's look at the French. Uh, the French are going to hold in the Western Mediterranean. They're going to try and move from Munich to Tyrolia. They're going to hold at Kiel right here. They're going to use their Silesian unit here and they're going to actually try and this is where you make an agreement with a country that is on its way out because you can at least still get an advantage off of it. Say, hey, if you can manage to survive, you can have all that territory. So I'll help you here. So they're gonna try and dislodge here. Uh, so they're gonna at least support that attack. Uh, they're gonna go from, attempt to go from Marseille Lyon. They are gonna attempt to this Mid-Atlantic Ocean is going to support the Western Mediterranean one. The Spain is going to support the Western Mediterranean. And then they're going to try and hold in Belgium. We now know when everything is revealed at the same time that that is not going to be a hold. So we're going to go ahead and retreat them here to Picardy. And then the English Channel will move to Belgium. So now what's left... Germany is going to move from Berlin to Prussia. I'm presuming they're just anticipating an attack at this point. They may also have made an agreement with another country to hold it back and say, hey, we're, we're abandoning this. You can have it. Just take out this country, please. Uh, Italy is staying busy. They're going to use these two right here to hit Vienna, which is going to succeed because there's no support of that unit because they wanted to hold. And that's going to mean that I think it's the Tyrolean one, yeah. or it's the Trieste one, is going to move to Vienna. So they preserve that. Notice they had it. They were kicked out by the French. They got it back. Uh, the Tuscany is going to move up here to Piedmont. Tyrrhenian is going to go to Ionian. Lyon is going to go to the Tyrrhenian. That'll allow this Lyon to move from Marseille. The Aegean is going to go for Greece. And the Cretan is going to be kicked out because the Serbian unit in Italy is going to support it. So that's going to knock them out. Uh, and at this point, Romania is going to try and go for Galicia, but there's so much going on there that it bounces. They're going to try and support. That's only going to do so much. It's Moscow unit wants to go for Ukraine. That will bounce because there's conflict going on. The Warsaw is going to go for Livonia and be supported by the Gulf of Bothnia. It's actually going to push out two to one. Support is cut, which means that now the Livonia piece gets simply taken out based on what happens here. The Ukraine one's gonna bounce. 
the Glacia move at least will work. Uh, the reason why there's a little bit of bounce here is that Romania is also attempted to be captured by Italy. Italy and Russia are two of the combatants that are left. There's some stuff still going on. You can still have a chance. Now is where you also notice that uh, supply centers come into play yet again. We are going to see that Austria-Hungary is now pretty much out because they've got the Albania, the Warsaw, and the Ukraine. They only have one supply center left. So they have to get rid of two of their units. So they chose to hold on to the Ukraine one, get rid of everything else. They're kind of freeing up space and they pretty much kind of know that they're out and are just getting out of the way. Moscow's there, Lemony's there. Right. You're gonna have... England's really gonna be holding on to what they can. They're going to actually build some army units here because now that we're at the end game, they've got to figure out where their 18 or whatever number they're going after is coming from. Uh, the Belgian one's going to be kicked out. Got that there. The Western Mediterranean is going to actually have to be disbanded based on the losing of certain things that holds that holds that holds the armies in picardy okay we're all good there uh, what else is left aside from italy is really starting to hold on to the outskirts of their turf they're actually doing pretty well here so the French got Tyrolia, but the supply centers are still being held by Italy. So Italy is actually uh, at 11 supply centers, and they've got a pretty good defensive structure. This is where, if you're Italy, there's really only so many places you can go left in this game. Because it is at this point... Trying to see if there's any other piece that I'm missing. That Warsaw one's there. Germany one's there. Now you've got the Berlin. Okay, got a big setup. So let me show you the board as it is right now. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you that this ends with a four-way tie. So the Ukraine piece is going to eventually be lost. The German pieces eventually going to be lost, knocking them out. So it's this point where you start to see an inevitable line. And let me show you exactly what I mean. So let's say that uh, Italy is kind of protecting this Terranian Sea. Uh, Russia is not going to dislodge them without going through quite a few units and building quite a few fleets. All they have to do is pretty much hold on to this Ionian Sea, support the Terranian Sea, and this Tunis piece can move maybe for something else here in a moment, but that's going to be hard to dislodge when you only have two or three units over here. England could kind of cut into France's turf. Uh, that's probably why they're building those army units. Um, but there's a little bit to be said for them holding on to an agreement and probably fighting for a draw. Italy and England could maybe come to an agreement and an understanding on trying to take out France and split their turf. Uh, but this kind of elongates something that if they've kind of agreed, okay, there's no one's really going to end up winning here. Russia is going to try and push against its game, but it has to then go up against Italy, which look at this defensive structure right here between the Balkans. That's going to be pretty hard to dislodge, especially because, remember, this fleet can't go into landlocked states. So it takes another three or four turns. But what happens is after all of the dislodging, all of the units eliminated, it ends up being a four-way tie with the ranking of Italy in first, England in second, Russia and France tied for third after everything shakes out. 
this is probably an average game of high-level play of diplomacy. Agreements made, agreements broken. Uh, England and Germany at one point had a significant agreement. Uh, that got inevitably broken, and when that backstab happened, France came in hot. Russia basically held its own for a while. Uh, they eventually took out Turkey. They weren't able to consolidate in Turkey because Austria-Hungary and Italy were kind of fighting for the scraps from it, and then when Austria-Hungary got squeezed out, Italy was the one poised to take advantage. So always with this game, consider what options you have, the ways you can go. That is diplomacy. I talked about magazines and the press, the press version of diplomacy. Now I need to talk about the internet. This game is still well played on the internet, especially because online forums have made it an easy way to have a static game played where you have a limited time set, but still allow for private communication. There are numerous websites out there that will let you play this game and use messaging services within the forum in order to contact your friends, your allies, and future opponents and who may become future allies in the future. So the internet made it such an important game to be able to play while also taking the element of chance out of it. It was just entirely how good are you at negotiation. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check out some of our other great NPO Universe content on our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages for story times, cooking videos, technology tutorials, you name it, we cover it. I'll see you next time.